Greetings, Glitter Goddesses. Happy Thursday. It's 9 o'clock on Thursday, December 12th. And this is the last Thursday show of 2019. So next week I won't be here because I've got to get my house ready for my family to come visit and actually be able to like sit on a clean couch and that sort of thing. And I've got to get food to feed them and all kinds of things so they don't die while they're here. That's the bar here at Catherine Scraps is that people who come to visit don't die. That's the, that's the bar. So it's real low. So we always succeed, you know. Um, so that's and then the, the next Thursday is the 26th, which is the day after Christmas. And I think people will be busy that day. So I'm going to take two weeks off and then I'll be back on January 2nd, I believe. Yes, January 2nd. I shall return on January 2nd. So this is it. This is it for 2019. It's been a fun year. I, well, I had fun. I mean, I hope you also had fun. But yeah, I, th I, I really enjoyed 2019. I think we had a fun time on the show back on YouTube it's been a blast. It's been a blast. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to um, decorate this folder, maybe make another one. We're going to use all these templates we made. They only need to eat on Christmas. Good tip. Good tip. I'll only feed them one time. Then they're on their own for the rest of it. They're on their own. <laughs> Say it isn't so. I know, I know, I know. I'm right. So these videos uh, will be going up throughout the week on last minute Christmas things that might help you out. Um, how to make these cute little gift uh, slide gift tags with the frame punch how to make this cocoa holder with the frame punch as well. So cocoa gift card. And then what else did we, oh yes. And then if you have sort of small fiddly, um, hard to wrap items like jewelry, this ornament gift holder as well. So those are the three things we made this afternoon. They're all in the archives already in a folder that's currently called 2019 Christmas tags and treats, I think. All right. So we don't need these two templates. These are the templates for the actual flaps. So I'm gonna set them to the side. We just need these two templates. So that's what we did this afternoon and I will put these videos on YouTube. Like I said, they're already in the archives. And so today we're tonight, we're going to decorate this. Um, and I'll show you what I've, what I have had in mind to go inside it. And then, um, you know, if we have time, we'll make another one. All right, let's get some paper. Let's get some cute paper. Am I going to show the ornament made with a cutting die? I, d I, I am not going to make an ornament out of the cutting die. I just realized earlier that I would probably, it wouldn't be like the cutest thing ever um, to do that really quick on the fly. So those, we're going to leave it at those three little projects. All right, let's start with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it in half down the middle. Oh, that one, I had to tear it open to get my chapstick back out of it. So that's what happened to it. And I think what I want to do 
is make, you know, put the wreath on this flap. So I'm going to just put this right here. Now, one thing I could do if I wanted to make it easier to see exactly what I was doing and exactly what I was cutting, that didn't make a mark at all. Did I not stick my pencil out far enough? Whatever. I'll just do it on the back, I guess. I could make a window. It's so funny because my pencil lead did not... did not stick or draw on the coating on this cardstock. So that was weird. Okay. So I know I just jumped right in, but these templates I made in a previous video in this series. This is from Black Friday and it's available in the archives and on my YouTube channel. Oh no, did I? Oh uh, wow. Well, that's fine. That's just gonna have to be fine. We'll just pretend we did that on purpose. <laughs> so I did it upside down. So that's cool. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. This is all, it's off to a good start. It's off to a good start. We'll just pretend it looks better this way. We'll just pretend it looks better this way. All right. It's a gar exactly it's a garland. It's just it's not a wreath, it's a garland. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I guess we could put it on the inside. Nah. Eh. Sure, we'll put it on the inside. Saved.
All right. So we'll save these pieces. Maybe we can use them elsewhere. And now we need to do the flaps and, and such, so. Okay. And to put something here. And on the inside of these is where we can work with the bigger images, like these, like this one. So this is pretty nice. I just need to remember what was the size of this piece of paper. So luckily I wrote all these things down, didn't I? Yes. Folder, nine and a quarter by six and three quarters. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut nine and a quarter and then I'll decide how to cut the barn. Um, okay, so that was obviously totally wrong. Oh, I did, instead of doing nine and one quarter by six and three quarters, I did nine and three quarters by six and one quarter. So now I have to tape the whole thing back together. <sighs> Past Catherine is a problem tonight. Time to Franken paper. No, I'm not going to take a deep breath. I refuse. We're just going to keep going crazy. It's the last show of the year, so. Let's just not worry about it. Let's just do wild crafting. All right, so this tape and this paper don't seem to get along, but that's okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this back on the side. piece. It's all because I made that beautiful bow earlier. That's true. That was when it all, st that's what I used up all my crafty luck for the day with that one.
Okay. So now we're doing nine and one quarter by six and three quarters. So cool. Nine and one quarter. By six and three quarters. Okie dokie. is this, which actually fits. All right, cool. We made it. Priya's biggest lesson or takeaway from 2019 was Franken paper. Yay! Franken paper is a good lesson to learn. It'll save you, save you money, save you time, save you tears. All right. Perfect. So now we're just going to ink this and stick it inside. Turned out beautifully. All right, and then while I still have this flat and it's relatively easy to work with, let's take a look. at some goodies. We can add, well, I don't want to, let's just do like one goodie at a time. So, okay. We have gold Franken paper and myrrh, but that's right. The wreath needs a bow. Oh, come on. I think we're pushing our luck with another bow. Two bows in one day sounds dangerous to me. But it does kind of look like it could use another little bit of, I have a little idea. I think what it needs is a little bit of red. And I see this little button snowflake here. Ugh, the button snowflake's attached to something. Okay, what about this little poinsettia? Yeah. 
and or I have a heart that's red also. So what do you think? Heart or poinsettia? Or I have a giant a bell. Maybe if we layered the heart over the bell. The heart is cute, but I think, no, nope, just the one poinsettia, I think. go all right that's enough we don't need to go crazy okay so now we're gonna cut these off the sides and then hit the edges with the ink and then put it in the book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so this is looking really pretty. Let's just scoop all this stuff that flung itself onto my desk back into its bag. Oh, look, a bird with feet. You know what? I'm going to leave this bird like up here, maybe for a Christmas miracle. We'll put the bird in the book with its feet. I don't know. I'm just flinging stuff all over my desk. I got to get this stuff. Normally this stuff is all on the floor. So I'm just going to throw it all on the floor. And that'll, tonight will go easier if I just throw everything on the floor. Where it belongs. All right. So now we need something to go here and here. And I'm just going to see if I can cut this out of this, which I can. So I can extend this to the sides. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the two scraps and use them. If we don't cut off any bird body parts in 20... If we don't cut off any bird body parts, we'll have luck in 2020. Good. That's what we need. We need 2020 luck. So we will, somewhere we'll put a bird. 
somewhere tonight a bird will keep its legs. It's sort of like in A Wonderful Life when the angels get their wings. <laughs> Only not as sweet. The bird is very nervous. It's like there's a lot of talking of birds getting their legs chopped off around these parts. All right, there we go. So, you know, in terms of you know, the pattern paper has this musical note. So technically, yes, it's sideways, but whatever. Like, that's one of those things that, you know, depending on how persnickety you are, you may or may not care about that. I'm pretty persnickety and I don't care about it. So I think most of you will be fine. We should put the bird on the barn. Yes, like a little weather vane. Like a little Christmas weather vane. Birdie, do you want to go live on this barn? On top of this barn? Yeah, the bird does have good cause to be nervous. It's, it's fair. It's totally fair. It could maybe stand on this window. But it's, it'll go in the, in the fold uh, if we put it right on. Well, I guess it could stand on the roof, not on the peak. It could just stand on the roof like it's just chilling. Do you like it better on the roof or in the window? Or on the poinsettia? Not on the poinsettia. Roof? I think the roof. In the bottom of the wreath? Like it's the partridge in the pear tree? What about just over here by the tree? Okay, so here's your choices. You got roof. This will be choice number one. You can vote. Roof is number one. Window is number two, and tree is number three. So you can vote, if to vote for the roof, okay, type a one in the chat. To vote for the window, type a two in the chat. And to vote for the tree, either, you know, down here or on top of the tree, type a three in the chat. And while you vote, I'm going to glue these down to the sides.
All right, so. Okay, so um, the roof is winning over the tree. So, and only Candy wants the bird in the window. <laughs> so, um, sorry, Candy. There, it's a bird with legs. All right, now. Sweet, so sweet, okay. What I'm gonna do now is we are gonna get some red We're gonna cut. Six and a half by eight and seven eighths. Plus four, one, two, three, four photos. The bird made it. The bird made it. It's a Christmas miracle. So eight and seven eighths by six and a half will hold two four and a quarter by six and a quarter mats. On either side and the eight and seven eighths measurement gives you an eighth of an inch all the way around each photo now if you want to put photos directly on it and you want to skip um, you want to skip the mats and you want to just put your photos right on the red or if you want to cut a piece of white cardstock and put your photos right on the white then what you would do is instead of eight and seven eighths by six and a half you would do eight and three eighths by six and a quarter. Eight and three eighths by six and a quarter. So that's if you wanna put four by six photos directly on this cardstock and not do mats. Which if you're recording your own Christmas memories then you can absolutely, you know, you don't need to worry about the mats unless you like the look of the mats. And then um, this will hold multiples of these. So you could put like 12 photos easy in each of these folders if you need to. And again, this doesn't have to just be a Christmas album. You know, we've been calling it 12 Days of Christmas because I made room in it for 12 of these folders. And see, this will go in here. And then we'll close this up over it. And that's what will be held inside the folder. So that when you open it, there's the photos, pick it up, look. Oh my gosh, how pretty, what a beautiful winter barn. All right, so that's, that's you get it. So now we just need to do the outside. We already made our closure, but I am gonna show you how to beef up the closure as well. If you wanna like chunkier closure, I'm gonna show you that too. So, all right, now we just need something to go on the outside. You knew I had it in me to save the bird. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use this plaid. And 
and I line the flat part of my template up with an edge whenever I can just to give me one less thing to cut. One less thing to cut. Priya says, I'm still here, but in case my house gets attacked by hungry monsters, I want to wish you all a wonderful holiday season. It's been great knowing, getting to know you all and looking forward to 2020 with everyone. Yes. Here's to another fun year in 2020. Okay, now this one I have to be more careful to make sure I get my words going the right way. So I need to do one on this side and one on this side. Okay, and so now we just cut everything out. So just a reminder, I will be back live on January 2nd, the first Thursday of January 2020. The new year will be very fresh and sparkling at that point. We're going to finish up split decision. And then we're going to do scrappy bowl. And then we're going to do the catch a tag remaster, which is the cruise and the school. The cruise and the school and catch a tag remaster has a portrait and a landscape so that's why we have two of them january 2nd is your birthday well happy birthday in advance happy birthday in advance Well, who's going to, um, yeah, maybe we should put some little regional get togethers together. We'll see. Oh, January 23rd. Okay. All right. So we've got these cut out. So now we're going to ink them and glue them. But just to get an idea. Oh, gosh. Okay. That's cute. Cute, cute, cute.
my brother's coming too and my brother's staying a whole week this time so he normally is he can't get much time off during the holidays um, because restaurants are very busy in the holidays especially restaurants like his they do a lot of corporate parties um, but he's getting a week off so that's nice So my parents get here on the 21st and they get here. Oh my gosh, my parents. They like are extreme early risers. Um, so when they travel, they get up at like three or four o'clock in the morning. So they will arrive at something like 9 a.m. because they've been driving for five hours, you know. So when they get in, they don't get in in the afternoon. They don't roll in in the afternoon. So you have to be ready for them before you go to sleep the night before they come. Like you have to be totally ready because they could show up at like 7 a.m. You don't know. Like they just like pounce first thing in the morning. So <laughs> that's, um, that. so so we will have to, when we go to bed on f Friday the 20th, we will have to be prepared. Have all of their snacks, my mom is not completely recovered, but she can bend her knee 120 degrees, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, she's not, it takes six months. It takes like six months or something like that for it to be even kind of like normal, you know, and to be done with the physical therapy and everything. So she's not, she's, I mean, she's well on her way and she can do a lot of stuff like drive and whatnot, but she said she's going to have to bring a cane with a seat on it for when we, if, when we're going out and about, if she gets tired from standing and has to sit and there's no chairs around that sort of thing. So she will have some limitations while she's here. So we were going to do a food, a walking food tour of Ybor City and go to a lot of the old sort of historical well historical for Florida which means like you know 100 years old uh, restaurants in the in that area but she's she's not gonna be able to do that so we canceled that and instead we're gonna do an escape room And then my brother gets in, so they get in early on the 21st. And my brother gets in late on the 22nd. And depending on how late is late, he may just, I may just leave the door unlocked and tell him to get a lift. Well, I have never been a morning person. I used to be a really extremely not morning person. Um, and I worked hard this year on becoming more of a morning person. So most days I'm up by nine naturally on my own. Although I do have an alarm that goes off at 10 just in case I'm not awake, but it's oh, I'm almost always awake when that goes off. And in fact, um, one day this week I wasn't awake when it went off and I, that like when I woke up, I was like, wow, that's really unusual. Like it felt weird to be woken up by an alarm, but I used to be, you know, get up at noon one, two, um, cause I was up all night into the early morning all the time, but I trained myself out of that. So now, yeah, I stay up later than anyone else in the house, but it's not, so extreme where I'm on a completely different schedule. Will I let my brother help in the kitchen? He, well, he can. We're going simple this year for Christmas. So, um, you know, he requested individual beef wellingtons, but we had a whole beef wellington last year and I was like, I just don't want to do it again. You know, so we're not doing it again, I said. So we're going to do a prime rib roast and we're going to do the closed oven method and we're gonna do a horseradish crust. So mustard horseradish crust. So what you do with that is it's like a three day process to cook this roast, but none of it's not hands on. So two days before you let it dry for 24 hours in the fridge so the outside is dry and stuff can stick to it. And then you put the mustard horseradish crust on it 
and you let that dry and then you put it in an extremely hot oven like 500 degrees for like 20 minutes and then you turn the heat off and then you leave the oven door closed for two hours. And what it does is it gives it a really intense crust on the outside but then it's just medium rare on the inside. So the only thing is you have to be in a household where you can guarantee no one will open that oven. Because if anyone opens the oven, the whole thing's ruined and you're done. Your, your roast is toast, right? So we're going to put like an X on the front of the oven with a painter's tape with, with a sign that says do not open. Like, and then brief everyone Christmas morning on the, situ the situation. <laughs> so be like, you know, if you open this oven to check on this roast, you are the person who ruined Christmas. So... <laughs> And then Mr. Lifeguard and I have been talking about buying a backup ham and honey baked ham in case someone opens the oven. So we'll see. Okay, so at this point we could be done. The way that works is this slides on here and here. And then you do also have to be in a household where people will eat horseradish and mustard. I forgot about you guys and mustard. Oh, I forgot about how controversial mustard was around here. Here we go again. Here we go again <laughs> with the mustard. <laughs> okay, so this is one way, but I'm gonna show you how to do like a bigger one of these if you wanna like more chunky. Um, I'm, I'll just use I'll use this scrap I have left over from the um, from cutting the mat that's on the inside. So what is this? This is five and a half. All right. So I'm going to cut it uh, to three by five and a half. And then I'm going to cut two that are two and three quarters by five and one quarter. Every time you open the turkey, you add half an hour of cooking time. Every time you open the turkey of it, the oven while the turkey's in there, you add half an hour of cooking time. Like just any time, any, if you have someone in your house who will not stop opening the oven to the, like check the turkey, every time they go to touch the oven, you say, every time you open that, it adds half an hour and then they'll stop. Or they should stop unless they're crazy and they like turkey to be in the oven for five and a half hours. All right. So the one that's three and by five and a half, we're not going to do anything to it. And the ones that's two and three quarters, two and three quarters, what's half of two and three quarters? Where's the calculator? Well, half of two and a half would be one and a quarter. So it's one and three eighths. Never mind. I mathed it. I used the common core. But you have to baste it. You don't have to baste it. You don't. You don't. Just brine it and it'll get a beautiful crispy skin. And you can just dry brine it so you don't have to like mess with a wet brine if you think that's going to be too much of a hassle. I don't baste my turkeys and they always have beautiful crispy skin and they're moist and delicious. Okay, so the one that's uh, three inches, I drew a line dividing it in half at one and a quarter. or one and a half. And then I'm just going to stick these two pieces to it to make the slit, to make the divider. Well, I put butter under the skin. 
So I put, like, yeah, I put butter under the skin, so. I mean, back when I did it, but you know we don't cook turkey anymore. <laughs> because I was overruled and we're never cooking a turkey again. <laughs> no, putting mayo on stuff you bake makes it moist and delicious and it doesn't taste like mayo at all. You can do, um, for fish, two, put mixed mayo and breadcrumbs and your and and a little bit of your favorite seasonings and put it just in a pile on top of the fish and it'll bake up crisp and delicious It's just another form of fat to use mayo, like if you put butter on your turkey or whatever. All right. So I'm just going to set that there. I'm going to put a bacon press on it so that it dries nice and flat. And then I'm going to make another three by five and a half inch piece. If I can, hopefully, yes, I have enough. All right. All right. So here's three by five and a half. So now we're going to put some cute pattern paper on it. I'm going to put um, some of this uh, blue paper with the little, I mean, I guess it's supposed to be holly. It looks like blood. Let's not, let's not think about it too hard. Um, <laughs> two and a quarter by five and a quarter. No, not two and a quarter, two and three quarters. Mine has a grid on it. It has a grid. It's not totally flat. Um, and I'm going to do steamed asparagus. Although I may give somebody that is not me the task of blistering the asparagus on our panini press. But I'm not going to do it. But I may give I'm, that task may be assigned to someone. Possibly Liz's boyfriend. Put him to work. Um, all right, two and three quarters by five and one quarter. All right, so that's going to go there. And then where's my um, my one? Okay. So all I have to do is just peel this back off of it. And I can reuse it. Um, Liz's boyfriend, I don't know if I've mentioned him. Um... He's newish. His name is Damien, which I told her is a warning sign that he might be the son of the devil. Um, but she said that's a really normal name in Switzerland, which is where his family is from, which is, you know, something that the Antichrist would say. So, um, but aside from that, he's fine. <laughs> All 
All right. So this is going to get covered up. So <laughs> Raven, good advice. Good advice. So, and this, this is, oh, did I tell you about the, I told you the Rosemary's Baby thing that I came down and they were watching Rosemary's Baby. Like it is, if that is not a red flag, I don't know what is, you know, so, <laughs> but just ignore me. I'm paranoid. Oh no! From the crashed reindeer? Ah ha ha! Oh my gosh. So, anyways. So that, <laughs> we'll see how that all goes. All right, let's see. So we're gonna put, I'm gonna put the one, you know, over here. Okay. So I'm gonna just glue the one down. And then we'll put glue on this and stick, wait, yes, okay. And we'll stick this down. I'm telling you, it's just the most violent show in crafting. Priya says, just when I thought we were doing so well by not hurting the bird. Yeah, now we have unicorn or reindeer blood, the Antichrist. I mean, it didn't go, it didn't stay, <laughs> it didn't say PG for very long. All right, so, but this is just like the other one. It's, it's the same concept, it's just beefier. So it's just gonna be a bigger presence on the page. This channel is definitely the full deal. We'll have to put it in. No, this is what we're doing. 
to not get classified as a kid channel. <laughs> this is how we keep our adult rating. Well, you have to, it's so funny because, you know, you have to, um, now you have to declare to YouTube if none of your videos are for kids, all of your videos are for kids or if you want to like label each video individually and I was like I don't think kids should be watching my videos I mean this may be a crafting channel but I don't think it's for kids <laughs> so, I was like kids should not be watching this <laughs> no they should not I mean they can like if they're too young to understand what I'm saying maybe <laughs> uh. I used to try to be family friendly, but it is too hard. It is too hard. All right, so while this is um, drying flat, let's talk about the back. So there's a couple ways to handle the back. One is um, you can just put pattern paper on it. One is you can put pattern paper and um, cardstock to like smooth out the edges so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put down a piece of cardstock in the same craft color and then put down a piece of patterned paper so let's get our book so I need a nine and a quarter by six and three quarter inch piece Now you can save yourself um, a lot of pattern paper on this project if you don't put pattern paper back here and you only do cardstock. So that's up to you. Um, I'm just going to put plain pattern paper. I'm not going to decorate it. But I definitely wanted to give you an idea of how to decorate at least one of them. So you would know what I had in mind. I have to do my nails again before Christmas. I did my Christmas manicure too soon. So I'm gonna have to do another one. Ugh, so much to do, so much to do. The devil's blood, <laughs> the the, sac the sacrificial goat. Um, yeah. If if you if you're new, and you're, um, and you haven't seen the. Distress Ink Storage Tower one, uh, one, the first Distress Ink Storage Tower I did. That literally looked like I sacrificed a goat on camera because of this particular liquid red ink that I was using that just looked so much like blood. What was it? I don't even know what its original name is because on my Distress Ink storage tower, I have it labeled as Vampire Tears, which is what we renamed it after that show. Rusty Hinge? No. Barn Door? No. I have Barn Door Festive Berries and what's the, what's the other red?
what I'm saying is I've been doing this for 10 years and it's never been normal. This show has never been normal. Okay, I just put this on crooked, great. Come on, come up. Be nice to me, it's Christmas. <gasps> it was nice to me. Look at that. Fired brick, thank you, that's the one, that's the one. I mean, it looks pretty. I'll take a picture so you can see the color <laughs> of the tower. Amber alert. Ugh. Awful to see those. Okay. All right. So this is, this is it. So you see the, how dark red that was, that was a liquid ink. So imagine this just pouring, just pouring all over my desk, this color red, like look at it compared to my fingernail and just imagine my hands dripping with it. It was just, oh my gosh, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. Osceola County is not not right. <sighs> okay, so now we're going to tape this to the back. That's right. Normal is overrated. That video is probably called something very calm and normal sounding like distressing tower one. So you don't know what you're getting into with that one. You know, so you're like, oh, a distress ink tower. That sounds nice. <gasps> What's happening? All right, so I'm just gonna lay this flat on my desk. And then I'm going to burnish this really well. And that just cleans up the back and makes the back look really nice and tidy. All right, so then we put our photo mats inside. And then we grab this. And slide it on. And there we go. Folder one, done. Folder one, done. All right, and so then you just slide that off, open it up and you've got this beautiful wreath all around and then your barn with your bird with its legs. So there we go. So there's how to decorate one of the folders for this book or for this box so then when you're done all right 
it goes in the box. Just like so. All right, and then there's room for four of these in each of the slots at least, at least. All right, so. All right, let's see if we can quickly knock out another one. So I'm gonna take a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and I'm gonna score each edge at one and one and a quarter. You didn't like the first one? Aw, Nicole, are you being maybe too hard on yourself? I'm sure it was beautiful, not hideous. Okay, so after you've done that, turn it over to this side and then get your templates and in a previous video, I showed you how to make these templates and the videos for this project are on YouTube and in the archives. So you have them either way. They're the national scrapbook day thing. All right. So these are the side card stocks and the top and bottom card. And so all you have to do is line them up. Okay and trace them and the score lines will already be on them. I do not have one of the new Stampin' Up! trimmers because I have a Rota trim. It was pretty bad. All right, I'm just gonna have to take your word for it. Um, so I don't test new trimmers um, because no trimmer I've ever tried has, you know, um, been as good. And also I try not to recommend um, stuff you can only get from like a demonstrator. If I can avoid it, I like to get stuff that's very widely available. So if I can or recommend stuff that's widely available if I can. Yeah, it's like the first pancake. Exactly, May. <laughs> All right. And I was hoping I'd be able to get these as well, but I won't. So you only need to do two sides of your cardstock. All right, so now we're just gonna cut these out. Oh, yeah, but so 
like I think wasn't there a problem with Stampin' Up just recently discontinuing their blades or something so that that's the kind of stuff I worry about which is why for trimmers that are available at Michael's Joann's all those places I recommend Fiskars because that company has been in business for over 400 years I don't worry about them Okay, so now there's the two sides and they're already scored. So now I've got, but I do have the Stampin' Up! trimmer because I did test it. And it's pretty good. So if you can't get the Martha one, but you can get the Stampin' Up! one, the Stampin' Up! one is the one I recommend as an alternative to the Martha one. If you can't get it and you want something that has like every, like it's like the, the, a really nice version with a stylus and everything. If you want a cheap version, get the EK Success one. These are four inch strips that I'm scoring at one inch and one and a quarter inches. Now you cannot get two of these out of one strip, so you're going to have to get two strips, although you could cut a 5 by 7 pinwheel. They would fit on a 5 by 7 pinwheel. And then you could get four out of one sheet that way. The scoreboard, I meant the scoreboard. But yeah, if you want a trimmer that cuts straight every time and is never going to be a problem for you, um, you can get a roto trim. That's what I recommend. Otherwise, um, if that's not going to fit your budget, I recommend the Fiskars Surecut, sure the one with the with the wire that I use. That's the one I recommend. And again, I recommend it because it's widely available and you know, Fiskars isn't going to have trouble getting the blades because they make them themselves. And that company is, like I said, over 400 years old. So, you know, they're stable. You can get them everywhere. You can get them outside the U.S. That's why that's what I recommend. All right. So we've got all the sides cut now we just need to put 
the back together so we need a piece that's I gotta look it up nine and a quarter by six and three quarters And just go ahead and cut two of those if you're going to do one for your back as well. Might as well just cut them both at once. Alright, I'm going to set the one for the back um, to, to clean up the back aside. Yeah, the Rota trim is a space commitment and a money commitment. So, because it's $200 and it's like two feet by 18 inches. It's a big guy. It's a big one. It's a big one. All right, so now we're just going to put tape on all of the flaps. I'm just gonna run a three quarter inch tape and you can see it doesn't go all the way to the edge and I'm not super worried about that um, because that's gonna get um, held down by the piece on the back so If you have a roto trim and you're looking for something to put it on, the IKEA Alex map drawers hold roto trims. All right. So all we do now is we stick these all to this piece. Oh my gosh, there's a piece of tape that is stuck to my finger. I won't get off. Okay, I got it. I got it. And then once these go on, it's just decorating time again. So let's see if we can knock out one more. All right, so now I'm gonna flip it over and put the other piece on the back. So 
Your friends went to Ikea and bought you new shelves. Ooh. Excited to reorganize your room, but haven't had time. Um, so I will tell you something funny. You know how every once in a while Google and Facebook are like, this is what you were doing last year. Remember how I had to take December off to clean my craft room because my craft room was such a like nightmare that it took me a month to get it ready for the craft room tour. So all month Google's been showing me pictures of like what we went through to get this ready for Scrappy Bowl last year and the doing the technology upgrade and all of that. And I'm just looking at all of like the boxes of stamps I had to organize and everything. And I'm getting so like just looking at the photos is rem reminding me how stressful it was to be in the room when it was like that. And how making me so grateful that we took the time to do it. And how happy I am and relaxed now that it's not like that anymore. And I think how much better, you know, it's been just to be in here and craft, you know. So now the back's all cleaned up and that firms it up a little bit to give it a little bit more, you know, make it a little bit more solid. So quickly, let me do the red, get that done as well. And again, the red is six and a half by eight and seven eighths if you're doing mats. And if you're not doing mats, it's six and a quarter by eight and three eighths. It holds one, two, three, four photos. I haven't tried the monorail, but I don't, tr um, I haven't trust, I don't really trust monorails because I tried that Fisker's monorail and I hated it with the fire of a thousand suns. So like I saw there was a really good deal on the road trim monorail. And I was like, maybe, I mean, that company is nicer, but I just didn't, I just didn't trust it. It has really strong magnets on the ends. No, the road, the double rail is not like that at all. It just moves. It just slides. You don't have to pull it off the ends. The master cut. Yeah, the monorails are a lot cheaper. But like I said, I'm wary of monorails because of that Fiskars monorail that was like just horrible, horrible, horrible. I mean, I like I, I just got done saying I, that, you know, I reskers. I reskers. What the heck? I recommend this Fiskars trimmer. I reskers. Great. Um, my reskermation for a trimmer is this one. The doll has great reviews, but is expensive. Yeah, I mean, if, if you, if it's, if space is an issue or if you just can't see yourself spending $200 on a trimmer, that Fiskars one is great. Get it with a coupon at Joann's or Michael's and it'll be great for you if the wire breaks they'll send you a new one fiskers is great 
you can get blades everywhere you can get blades on sale and you can use coupons on blades so it's, it's really the way to go i think Yeah, that Fisker trimmer works great. I've had I've had that one for years as well, years and years. So you have a really hard time cutting chipboard. I use the roto trim, my roto trim to cut chipboard. You do, um, you could. Um, you can use a rotary trimmer and, um, a, a creative grids ruler. That's another way you could cut, cut chipboard. All right. So I'm going to stick these on and then the photo mat will be done. And then we'll just decorate our, our second folder and get an idea, get another look going, make another one. Yeah, they're really good about replacing the wire. Yeah, will you, uh, I, you know how I, um, I label the blades on the Fiskars when I've used up one side. When you've used up both sides and you, your, uh, and your Fiskars blade is black on both sides, use it for chipboard because it'll still cut chipboard for a while, you know. So you can still use it for chipboard after you, it's starting to make your paper raggedy. So you can use the used up blades for chipboard. All right. So just double check to make sure it's right side up. Again, you can use this box for things that are not Christmas. Baby's first year. This would be great for baby's first year. Be great for a graduation present. One folder for each school year. Um, all kinds of stuff. The, the wed a wedding. All the different events that go surround a wedding. All right, so that's ready to go in the book. I'm gonna set this to the side and now we're gonna start working on paper. So let's find something big to go in the middle first. That way, if we need to design around it, we can. Like this Santa might be nice. That's a possibility. Ooh, here's a nice one. With this bird with the believe in the magic. So we would have that bird coming out of the side like so. And we've got this really big poinsettia. That's also really pretty. These trees are nice, but we did just do the barn, so I wouldn't do the trees for folder number two. I would save them for later in the book. All right, I think let's do Believe in Magic because the bird 
this bird is celebrating the magic that left the previous bird alive. This bird also believes in magic. <laughs> So put the bird down there. So now we just need to think about what's going to surround the bird. And I think maybe this green on the sides and this plaid on the top. But actually, instead of this green polka dot, I think these trees would be better. Yes, 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 yes. Or we could just go full bird bonanza. No, that doesn't look cute. So we're not going to do that. All right. So let's tape this and stick it down tape ink stick this bird did it hit its legs behind this believe in magic sign that's why it believes in magic hello deb So what we're going to do, stick this down. Put that in the center. And we're having fun letting birds keep their legs. Happy 2019, birds. All right, so I, let's see, what else have I done? Oh, I ordered funny Christmas shirts for everyone. So I was like, some of them are kind of Christmas sweater style, but they're t-shirts because it's Florida. We can't wear sweaters here. So I ordered funny Christmas t-shirts for everyone in the family. And then I texted, my family has a group chat and I put texted the group chat that everyone needed to send me their t-shirt size. Well, I texted everyone individually to send me their t-shirt size and then like none of them did. So then I texted in the family group chat that if you haven't already, you need to send me your preferred t-shirt size. And my dad wrote that his preferred t-shirt size is a medium, but because he's overweight, he needs a large. Which was such a dad joke thing to say. <laughs> All right, so 
Um, because this paper is directional, they need to go on opposite sides. Well, the, <laughs> the, we're lulling the birds into a false sense of security. Is that it? All right, and then we'll cut these two. So get the plaid. Now, if you have trouble visualizing patterns like knowing exactly where to put, you know, your tracing. I will, uh, what you can do is if you trace this on a scrap piece of paper and cut it out so that it leaves a frame, then you can frame the piece you wanna see. So what I mean by that is, let me, I'll just show you real quick. So you would put this on a piece of scrap paper and you would give yourself, you know, space all around it. And then, okay, like this, all right? And then, all right, so it, Gretchen was talking about how in the, there were a bunch of birds flying around her house and it's all, has anyone asking her if she's seen um, the birds? Has anyone seen Birdemic? All right, and then what you do is you just cut it out, cut out the middle, okay? Okay, and then what you do is you use this instead. So when you're going to try and figure out, you know, what you're gonna put on your page, you know, if you need to be able to see what you're cutting to feel confident, then you can go like this and then you'll see what you'll actually be left with. All right, so that's just a tip. Now, we talked about um, how my mat's getting really sticky. We need to get, uh, it's time to replace it. And Jill pointed out that the top of the mat is clean. Um, and we could just turn it around. If I do that, the numbers, these numbers will be upside down. So I don't know if that, how much you use those numbers. I mean, I use them 
but I can count backwards, maybe. Maybe I can count backwards. I don't know why I said that so confidently, like I was sure I can count backwards. I don't know if we should unleash past Catherine on, well, I guess she's technically future Catherine at this point, but I don't know if we should unleash future Catherine on upside down numbers and expect her to actually math correctly. All right, so we'll ink all these and glue them down. Twenty twenty, the year Catherine does all her counting backwards. Yeah, exactly. I who foresees a problem with that? Anyone? Does anyone think that could go wrong? Alrighty. Voila. Now we stick. Stick, stick, stick. Stick it down. Stick, stick, stick it down. Everyone's saying, we'll just watch to the end and then make it once you've figured out all the mistakes. Yeah, that's, you should do that anyway. You should do that anyway. It's the only way to be safe. All right, how cute is this page two? to put on the front I'm going to use this polka dot with this poinsettia and on the panel we'll use let's cut down a four by six card Yeah, 
yeah, we'll cut down this Santa. Let's get out our number two. Alright, and we just need a piece of brown cardstock. So, all right, so we need a two and a half inch circle just to keep them consistent, but I'm only going to do one. Journaling on the soft sides would be very pretty as well. Yes. Putting journaling here. Melanie. I would use, okay, a star card, gluing card blanks together. It depends on whether you want your pages to be flexible or stiff. If you want your pages to be stiff like a board book would be, I would use liquid glue because it'll dry hard. Um, if you want the pages to be more flexible, then use a uh, dry tape like Miracle Tape. Okay, so, and then, oh, we just need something for the back, the very back. Let's use, we'll just use this. So it's, um, nine by six and a half. Right? Yeah, six and a half. The back is nine by six and a half. We need um, five and a half by three from the remnant of the piece we made the uh, cardstock mat. We need two three inch by five and a half inch pieces and two two and three quarter by five and a quarter inch pieces. All right. Okay, so we've got those pieces. This we need uh, two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Antiseptic wipes to clean your mat. Hmm. I haven't tried them. Maybe I can give them a whirl first. goes there these go there all right I'm gonna do the closure first so it can dry while I cut the other pieces out so it's gonna be this beautiful um, strength of hold glue is always glue is always stronger then uh, tape. So if you if you want it to be very anything you want to be really strong, glue is always going to be your strongest, most durable option for anything. Because it fully dries and it's not as affected by humidity and and, the, and things like that. So um, if you're, if it's durability, then I would do glue. All right. All 
these closures I'm really enjoying. Um, in the video on YouTube where I put this, ugh, I have glue under my fingernail. Um, you, there will be a link to where the closure comes from and there are other additional closures from the same crafter for when you're looking for magnet alternatives. Uh, on Kita's craft corner and um, the link's not in this live video because I think it's showing split decision right now. Um, however, in the playlist, all the videos in the playlist for this on YouTube will have the link in their description. Okay. So now we've got to score these two smaller ones. They get scored at um, one and three eighths. Back under it goes. All right. So on this piece, so that we're gonna mark one and a half inches. My class reminder email so, still says we're working on half the fun. I'll have to talk to Mr. Lifeguard about that because he's the one who makes those. So he must be behind. So I'll make sure he fixes it for 2020. Alright, so we shall get to work on this. So I'm going to put, go ahead and put this on the back. Again, we're just to make the back look finished. It's not, we're not decorating the backs. And you can save yourself pattern paper by not putting the pattern paper and just putting the cardstock on the back. So that's up to you. It, you know, it just depends on whether or not you think the people who are going to be looking at these books are going to look at the back or not. Good night, Ella. Thank you very much. <sighs> happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year.
All right, so we're going to burnish. We're going to go a little bit over tonight because I'm going to finish this folder. Let's get this stuck to the back. Again, don't overthink your pattern paper. Now we just need to cut out what we chose. So I chose the poinsettias for the top and the bottom. Sometimes when I use the fine tip on the glue, it beads up when it dries. Hmm. Do you burnish with a bone folder to kind of spread the glue out after you stick the paper down? doing the last trace. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wonder if that's it. Not, not spreading out and it's just kind of clumping in places. I've also noticed I have to work more quickly with the uh, fine tip because since the glue is thinner and the Scotch Quick Dry dries, it, um, you know, it starts drying a lot faster and it can dry on the back while you're messing around, especially if the piece is really big or really detailed and it's taking you a while. because I've definitely noticed when using a fine tip on scotch quick dry in particular I have to motor you know All right, 
last piece to cut. Perfection. So now we're going to ink all four of these and stick them down. So I will try to, if Beach Mom is feeling up to it, I'll try to get her to go with me to HSN and we'll try to film if we can. And I'll post it in the group if we get video, in the Facebook group. Because I think that would be fun. Because we did want to do, we were going to go to the out one day, we had one day set aside for outlet shopping because we have some out a pretty nice outlets near us but we have another day that's free for shopping if we want to do more shopping so we shall see i'm very excited to know i have that near me and maybe i will find a cutting machine at a really good price What did you say? I need to get a Cricut Maker. Is that what? Or a Silhouette 4? Either or? Or which one is better? I don't remember where we landed. I think Cricut was white. Yeah, I think it's either or at this point, you know, maybe it'll be obvious where one of them will be discounted and the other one won't. And it's like, okay, we'll get the discounted one. So Cricut is the more powerful cutter, but the software is crappy. Oh, so the Silhouette software is better and easier to use. But the Cricut machine cuts more. Okay. Well, it was really funny because, you know, we're, we, we have our eye on what houses are for rent around here. And Mr. Lifeguard found one. We found one on a military rental site um, that's just bigger than what we would normally be looking for. But it was in our location and in our price range. And it has um, solar energy to reduce your energy costs monthly energy costs so the size isn't as big of a deal um and on-demand water heater and at first i was like well we just don't need you know a, a, a house this big but then i was like but if we had a house this big i could expand my craft room and have all kinds of cutters and crap so <laughs> So I can just become even more of a craft hoarder than I already am. Okay. All right. So everything is on. So now we'll stick our 
photo mats in. And of course, this would be a beautiful place to put a photo as well, you know. All right, let's release Santa Claus. Ah, so we made this folder and this folder. Beautiful. <laughs> More space for crafts and a classroom. All right, so we got two two folders in. All right, so we're one sixth of the way done, <laughs> but um, there's some beautiful folders to go in the box. So um, what can I say? It's been a fun last class of 2019. Thank you so much to everyone who joined me tonight and everyone who joined me throughout the year. I really appreciate you joining me and supporting the stream and joining the Facebook group and posting your projects there. It was so wonderful to see everyone's projects during the glitter party. You all have been awesome. You've been great. Um, it's been so much fun. So thank you for a wonderful 2019 from the bottom of my heart. I hope you enjoyed everything we did this year. We're gonna do more fun stuff in 2020. It's gonna continue to be really, really a blast. So I will see you all on January 2nd for the first show of 2020. In the meantime, have happy, healthy, and safe holidays. Be careful. Don't get in any carving accidents. <laughs> um, always exercise caution when carving bird legs. <laughs> and have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday, and a Happy New Year. And I will see you in 2020. Thank you so much. See you next year. Bye now.